And uh, today we have a special guest, uh, my personal friend and Taoist colleague, uh, fitness and strength coach, Alexandra Galvez. And um, yeah, <laughs> hi, Alexander. And he's joining from Florida. <laughs> Uh, uh, so we will be talking today about his important work that he does with men and in his men circles. And for those of you who don't know, Alexander and myself will be hosting a class on Thursday, October 13th, and I will include the link uh, after the uh, stream, I will include the link in the uh, caption so you can click on it and you can register. Uh, this is a very, very important class, long overdue, because I have a lot of men contacting me and asking, when will there be events for men? When uh, will they have an opportunity to experience um, a wisdom that is being offered to men about lovemaking, about intimacy, <clears throat> about creating a deeper connection with the partner. So this is an incredibly uh, important uh, talk. And this is an introduction for our class. And also, I think it's a great opportunity uh, for you to meet Alexander and, um, He's, he, and find out about the amazing work that he does with men. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce uh, Alexander and let him first tell us uh, who he is and uh, what he does. Oh, thank you, Irina. Thank you so much for being uh, available and um, to be able to work with you. I think it's, this is a very, very important, critical time in our history to be teaching this work because of the epic times that we're in and the significant of the changes that are happening so rapidly mm -hmm. friendly and facing humanity, all of us. So this, this is very important work on very, very different levels. I myself, I'm a fitness consultant for about 20, 20 years, over 20 years, mm -hmm. uh, primary mm -hmm. strength conditioning coach. Um, I've worked in New York for over 20 years, very successful business there. And what I realized, though, in training myself after a few life experiences as a younger man that were fairly traumatic was that getting myself physically in shape was just a very small part of the whole dynamic of uh, uh -huh. being whole, a whole person, really. Um, and as I matured, realized that I had very, very little skills in relationship and or uh, forget about lovemaking. That was like out of the question. So... Um, <laughs> So that's what led me to go into the, 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 the deeper work and not so much related to sex itself, but more in terms of uh, aligning my emotions, my mental body, my spiritual body, and my physical body. And that's what led me into the Taoist practices through my master teacher, Mantak Chia, which has been a 6,000 year old Taoist practice from China. Which is yes, yes, we share the same teacher, yes. Yeah, it's very, it's quite significant. So um, although sexual cultivation is a very small part of it, it's an mm -hmm. interesting part to understand the alchemical process of how to refine these more subtle energies with partners, with self primarily, and then with the other. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's yeah. been incredible work to really um, bring me into a better place uh, as a man. I've also worked with uh, extensive men's group for about 10 years now, with uh, the Sterling organization particularly, mm -hmm. fairly mm -hmm. known well-known about 10 years which is uh, basically a group of men who come together every week to support each other in a in a very sacred dynamic where it's 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 a, it's a contained circle where okay. men have to trust each other to become the best men they can be and it's quite um, rigorous I would say too so that also keeps us really sharp and keep our swords sharp if you will mm -hmm. uh, as good men as fathers as partners as businessmen as, and as a mm -hmm. all aspects of uh, men identity yeah, exactly uh, very important. Yes. No, thank you for sharing your path. And I'm going to ask you this question because even uh, the work I do as a therapist and relationship coach, I know sometimes it's hard for people to look at themselves in the relationship and unhealthy patterns and unhealthy communication um, patterns too. And look into themselves to see, okay, I need to shift that. I need to work on that. So what inspired you to really look into yourself and your inner world and to shift certain things, like you said, 
in relationships aspects and lovemaking, with you know, connecting with your partner, like what inspired you? Because it's not easy. Yeah. You know, I think other people inspired me seeing people in really healthy relationships and, and really wanting to to know how 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 did how did they do that? What's how did they find that dynamic of finding the right person in your life? Uh, you know, if, if possible, even a life partner. It's um, mm-hmm. um and going through the the um the you know ups and downs of relationship and a lot of um problems and things that you know i didn't know how to address and quite frankly didn't find the 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 right resources in the mental health field either actually right yeah yeah i know how that is yeah so for me if i may then what i did was look at the ancient practices something that's time tested thousands of years proven Mm -hmm. yeah and involve no media, you know, you know, blitziness, no, you know, flash and pan. You know, this is about centered practice, you know, character, things that we've lost in our well, society. Glamorizing all this sexuality and putting expectations on people. That's what you're saying, yes. Well, it's back to the core principles that we've lost as a society, particularly in the last, you know, few years, even more so. Mm-hmm. Um, and to bring back these principles back into place that create powerful lives. Absolutely, and I am also a big fan of Taoist practices, and I I specialize in cultivation of feminine sexual energy and healing and how that translates into relationships and better connection with others for greater fulfillment in life as well. And it's very um, refreshing to hear from my counterpart, <laughs> A, a man who really studied these practices for many years and observed shifts within himself. And now he can bring uh, this uh, amazing work to other men. And that brings me to my next question is, what kind of work do you do with men? Can you just um, tell us a little more about this? Yeah, sure. So what we've what we've noticed, you know, through the men's work particularly is that, you know, as men, and I'm just I'm kind of being a little broad here with the stroke, is that as men, we either have our commitments or our addictions. Mm, interesting. Uh, we we're very black and white about it, you know, because we get kind of caught in this very, you know, theoretical world of whateverness. And to me, in our work, that doesn't work. And we find that women respect men who are very more direct and black and white, not overly aggressive or anything like that, you know, well balanced, <laughs> but to be able to be clear. <laughs> What we find is that in our work, if we're not committed to a purpose and a direction very strongly of what we do and have fun doing it, of course, we are caught in a lot of distraction, delusion, deception, and addiction. And it's, and it's prevalent throughout the work that we do, and it's, it, we see it all the time. It's just part of human nature, right? We're, you know, we get sometimes get lazy. We're caught in our phones today. The, the culture today has it that way, you know, where... Uh, this, this device is almost tied to us if they're not going to inject it into us next, something like that, right? So right. that's what we're noticing. And that we provide a clear direction to empower men and to refine um, the next level for that, if you will. Yeah, and how, how, what areas of men's life does it touch upon? Yeah, so all aspects, because what we realize is that, you know, of course, we're whole beings, we have emotionals, particularly our emotional needs that as men, we are almost awkward in a lot of times, right? Um, Now, of course, you know, we're not talking gay straight with, you know, all of us, we all have all these emotions, but Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more um, uh, heterosexual men where where we don't know often how to uh, uh, work with our emotions a lot Mm -hmm. of times. So the, the circles of men helps us to, to work out a lot of the negative emotions so that we can experience the powerful emotions with our families, our workplace, and our children, and not bring the dark emotions there. We bring it into the circle. Right. That's where we leave it in the circle with your men so that you can perform out in the world the way you should properly do it. Or run away from these emotions, right? Or yeah. <laughs> allowing them to show up in your relationships in the wrong way. So this is a place for men to really come in and be accepted and talk about their emotions and talk about all sides of them, uh, lightness and darkness and their strength and their areas that need work need attention maybe sometimes that are not revealed to their partner so this is a safe place for men 
to come in and to do this work and also see that other men struggle with this as well. It's they not they not alone. They not the only ones with with this heaviness that they have to carry as a result of society imposing and teaching men to do this unhealthy you know follow this unhealthy patterns and you know inside of that work we found that a lot of men are addicted to porn severely mm -hmm. addicted to porn. Yeah. And yeah. what it does is desensitize them more and more to real relationships and particularly because the phones in our life there's an extra uh, another compound yeah. effect of the yeah. association with people right so so in, in our work there's none of that technology you know we use Organic technology, this is the most powerful one. Mm -hmm. And that's also what led me to the Tao work because it's all organic technology. It's using your body, no technology, no artificial te technology, all pure organic technology that's millions of years old and it's built inside of us that you tap into, learn how to use properly and then bring it to the other. And it has an incredible intelligence and wisdom. And when, when you know, uh, how it's activated and how to work with that energy. Uh, I'm, I'm personally fascinated uh, how much when people connect to their body. And I know Taoist work is very much into your body. Like this, that's all it is. It's being in your body and really listening to uh, cues and clues that your body gives away on like your emotional state, your physical state, your sexual state, your mental state, right? So your body carries all of those messages and just being able to identify and raise awareness to be in your body, like you said, to work with this technology, to see greater satisfaction in your relationships and your sex life, as opposed to relying on the porn industry that is... <laughs> has this unrealistic expectations of both men and women and the way they should look and how they should act and how they should perform and and then people get trapped in this if they don't live up to this kind of like yeah in the meantime none of it is what it seems like you know and i could tell you this and you know um it it's a developmental practice when we're talking about the Tao sexual cultivation work for men particularly mm -hmm. What we teach men is to is to prolong ejaculation. That's the key because it's it's intrinsically related to your aging process, and this is what most men don't understand. Because if we're talking about life force, the critical life force to bring life into this earth, this is a very powerful what we call original force. So I, I start using less sexual terms and more terms about energy, mm -hmm. energetic terms, so that you understand that everything is currency, the currency of your life force, right? Mm -hmm. This is everything. And once you learn how to learn how to respect that and refine this power and bring it into your body through the heart so that you can become more loving. And of course, then through your spirit, which is then, you know, in your community, your your obviously beyond the family, into your community, into the world, and into your purpose as a man, that it becomes a very, very, very powerful force. Yeah, I agree with you. It's extremely powerful. And uh, you already touched on this, uh, like, why is it important? Why is it important for men to raise this awareness of their body, of their masculine energy, of their sexual energy, and this refinement and cultivation? Well, if you can expand a little more, yeah, like, you know why is it important? Yeah, you know what I'd love to do is, is have a little bit of a dialogue with you. So what what do you like in a man? What what are the, the, the qualities that you really um, turn you on or admire or really feel when you feel that exchange of, 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 of a man that would really um, you know, impress you upon you? So I'll ask you, what are those qualities? So for me as a woman, uh, and I can only speak for myself, um, and I guess for women I worked with uh, who shared similar perceptions, uh, for me, it's very important to uh, be with the man who's present, mm -hmm. like not only present with me in a conversation and so I can feel heard and validated and understood, right? But also present with himself, like with his body, with his in touch with his emotions, and present with what's going on in his life 
like for me to this kind of like shiva we call it in spiritual world right this activation of the shiva and en energy and pure presence and pure consciousness it's a container for me that can hold all my feminine emotions and my expressions and even sometimes you know we like you know this hurricane is and uh, women not you know and i'm not saying this in in negative way but we are we most women are ex very expressive and emotional and 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 we just want to express and then we have this hormonal monthly fluctuations in our lives right so and it's important like when a man is centered and present and in his power um, he doesn't fall victim to this kind of like unhealthy patterns and reacting to women, you know, in a way that is not healthy for him or her or, or the relationship, right? So the presence extends not only um, to the partner, but also to his own self. And that's for me, I don't know if we are on the same page and we are totally yeah, I would agree. I would totally agree. And that's what a couple of these tools provide. So in other words, the men's circle itself provides us for the tool to understand women. We have the year 30, 40 years of training around relationships, and mm -hmm. we find the dynamics of the differences, right? To honor the differences between women, men and women. We do really communicate differently. And we have and we work on understanding that. Like this is a woman, this is how you have to treat her. These are usually the, the markers that you can look for, mm -hmm. you know, for when, when problems start to happen so that we already have a sense in the circle of what to anticipate. Right, right. Practice that with our families or, you know, if you're married, what we call long term committed or in short term recreational, there are very different dynamics taking place. Mm -hmm. You know, are the same, but the dynamics are the same long term committed relationship like marriage. Mm -hmm is very, very different dynamic than say, if I'm dating just to have fun or to practice, you know, becoming, going into a long-term committed relationship, whether I have, want to have a family or not. Mm -hmm. I, would I, not add, I would add that, you know, the family is probably being, you know, very much attacked today in a very, in, in, the, in the normal sense of family, right? Which is part of our evolution. So what I would add is that the Taoist sexual cultivation work for men, had I been married, I probably would have saved my marriage. Mm -hmm. It's because once the energy is, ref you know, because if you're in a gross energy of not knowing how to use sexual energy in your marriage, things eventually start becoming dull for most people. Where I found that if when I used the work and my heart opened, which is terrifying for most men, but if you have the courage, which is what courage means, courage means the heart. Mm. When that energy is refined it has to go up it doesn't go out anymore to produce children or get wasted down a toilet mm -hmm. it doesn't go horizontally out in the gross realm mm. you find into the higher realms of the heart so it's super pro family because your partner you really become merged with her soul and i've it's happened to me before and it was one of the greatest experiences of my life i can i can say that um yeah, I haven't traveled much around the world, but I ha I've seen another soul through these beautiful practices, and it's, mm -hmm. it's incredible. Absolutely, the most unforgettable experience of uh, one of the most unforgettable experiences of my life. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, eternally grateful to her for that. Yeah, I mean, we all want that, right? That heart connection and that heart expansion. Men or women, we all want that. We want love, we want safety, we want connection. That's what bonding science teaches us. That's what spirituality teaching us. And mm -hmm. sometimes we get lost in all this learnings of society and religion and our, our um, intersectionality and identities. And, and we forget who we are and what our energy can actually give us and that's pure love so so to do this work is to to really be connecting with partners and with yourself from 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 your heart Irina what have you found are the greatest challenges in uh in your in in how you've um worked with clients is, is there some predominant um issues that you kind of see patterns of always coming up for people so for me, um, uh, I have to say, I what I've noticed with couples that I work with and individuals, it's this disconnect from the body. 
So I do a lot of, I'm an emotionally focused therapist. And uh, of course I work and hold women's, uh, women's and men's emotions. So it's a disconnect of the emotion being this like in your head, rational thing that can be rationalized, <clears throat> put in a box, right? And actually everything has to be solved in the uh, this mental level. Uh, and what I find when people start dropping into their body mm -hmm. and realizing it's a somatic experience that you can feel the emotion in your body, the body, you start getting more into your body and couples start identifying their triggers and how the, the needs are affected and, and it opens the door to vulnerability right so the biggest challenge is to actually have people feel all those emotions and not judge them as good or bad or wrong or let's say is there space for all of these emotions to live within us can we experience let's say compassion and anger at the same time. Let's say if you had a parent who was emotionally abusive, is it possible to understand that this parent is also a product of some abusive uh, system, right? And we feel compassion for that parent, but also we angry because of the way this parent treated us. Can we feel all those emotions, right? <laughs> so without pushing them away, without um, judging, how we should feel or what others should feel and feel them in our body and shift ways how we respond to those emotions, right? So this is one of the most challenging uh, things I find. And it takes a lot of time for people to actually start understanding this concept. Um, but once they do, it creates a, such an experiential profound shift mm -hmm. uh, in their relationships and in their self-esteem and their self-worth. Uh, once they become aware of how the emotion is felt in the body and how to shift it and release it and what to do with it. Um, because emotions are here to stay. We can't do anything. We can't get rid of them. This are, they are part of our survival. They're part of our human makeup. Uh, and, you know, finding ways to deal with those emotions and accepting those emotions and accepting others for being human is one of the biggest challenges, you know? It's easy to love somebody when they're nice to us and we feel heard and we feel validated and we're in our heart expansion. But what about when traumas come up and darkness comes up? Can I still love you in that? Can I still accept you in that? Can I still forgive you for that? That's where the work is. Yeah. So that's, we we have a long uh, way to go, but Alexander, I am so grateful to you. First of all, for doing this work with men. It's incredible. It's needed. It's necessary. Second, for taking your time to share this with my audience and um, I know men on my, uh, you know, viewers, uh, you know, will be happy with the video and uh, because this is long overdue. And third, I am so looking forward to uh, co-teaching with you on Thursday, October 13th. And once again, everyone, if you're listening, we are going to put link and uh, in the caption and in the comments so please uh register share this video this is important it's important work it's just for the evolution of our humanity and a uh, way of being it's it's so needed yeah Did, do you want to add anything alex so yeah i want to add one thing you know when i first started this work and and people were finding out i was teaching you know my teachers had told me you know you you have to go teach now is you know how to do a certain amount of these practices. Mm -hmm. you know, your obligation, almost like a missionary, is now to teach others uh, the Taoist system of preservation. And you know, I was I was a little uh, reserved about it, but interestingly enough, it was the women who were telling me, "Please go teach." And it happened mm -hmm. once. Mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. another girlfriend came to me, "Please teach this to my boyfriend." 
And then another one say, hey, you know, you know, you should really teach this to men. They really need it. Yeah. Uh, the women need it. Yeah. And finally, a fourth woman, when one of my practice uh, teachers, you, you probably know her, she literally jumped on my back and she started pounding on my chest and saying, you go teach men now. Go do it. Mm -hmm. That is the sign from the goddess herself. And I saw it as a, like literally a sign of the feminine saying, do this now. And all your fears, forget about your fears. Forget about all, you know, whatever fears you have and go out and teach the men. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. So upgrade to, to all these women who cross your path and then who yeah, kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's knock it's that fear out of you and said, hey, you have to go and you have to. From experiencing this myself, from, you know, having a, a partner who really understood how to practice this and the level of, mm -hmm. of, of soul and intimacy that you can really discover for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and have all the other issues come up and seeing if you can get past that or not. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, I am looking forward to, to working with you on the 13th and we you will be sharing concrete uh, skills, right? And, and technique yeah. and cultivation. So here we're just talking, but uh, uh, and I also will be sharing um, some uh, techniques, how to stay in your body, how to be present during lovemaking, how to cultivate that deeper connection with your partner. So please come to the class. It will be fun. And uh, we creating a safe space for everyone to be themselves. And please come, learn, spend time with us, interact with us, and be part of this important work. So, bye. Yeah. Thank you, Irina. Peace, everyone. <laughs>